emerge from the depths of space. They were also referred to as strange creatures. When they come to the planet, they nourish themselves by consuming humans and animals. This film depicts a scene from 7,000 years ago, in which some ancient humans are shown catching fish. When that bizarre thing emerges from the sea, it attacks them. Humans are hunted by the deviants. After devouring the guy, it turns its attention to the child. The earth is moved by something eternity. Arisham has dispatched him to the planet. As a result, he will protect people from the deviants. Icarus was a mighty immortal. While emitting laser light from his eyes, he can put a stop to those animals. He's even capable of flying. In the meantime, Icarus extinguishes a creature, and a slew of new creatures appear. The Eternals make their way to Earth. They put a stop to those odd creatures. The people were terrified to see the Eternals. Druid, an Eternal, then takes possession of the human minds. He has the capacity to take control of people's minds and manipulate them as he sees fit. Eternals take the first step toward becoming human buddies. Later, they began to coexist alongside humans on the planet. Eternals coexisted with humans, assisting them in the advancement of technology. They used to get into a lot of fights. Druid frequently prevents them from fighting by influencing their minds. The Eternals leader prevents him from doing so. Because the Celestials leader has dispatched them to save humanity and expand their number, and has barred them from engaging in any other activity. Druid refuses to obey her, and Ayak says to Druid, now you are free. She claims that you are free to go wherever you wish. You can live your life any way you wish, they depart of the city, and then the present scene is presented. For the past 7,000 years, Eternals have resided on this earth. Still, their ages were the same. An Eternal Circe, who educates children at the school, is depicted. Because she was late, her friend was in charge of the children. Meanwhile, Circe comes and expresses her gratitude to her friend for putting up with the kids for so long. There was an earthquake while Circe's friend was leaving. Meanwhile, Circe's student was going to be crushed by a statue. Circe uses her abilities to turn the statue into sand. Circe has the power to turn metal objects into sand. Circe goes to a club with a friend at night. Another eternal named Sprite is introduced, and he has the power to easily transform into anyone's disguise. When someone touches Sprite's body, though, light emanates from him. Sprite has been unmarried for the past 7,000 years as a result of it. Circe was at the club to celebrate her friend's birthday. Circe's acquaintance has information about her. Circe, like Circe, is an old man who is also a magician. While they were moving and conversing, a creature appeared and attacked Circe's friend. Circe, meantime, uses her abilities to freeze the creature's feet. Circe's companion inquires, can you tell me what it is? Circe claims that they are the creatures, but her buddy claims that they have been extinct for many years. How did it manage to stay alive? While freeing itself from the sand, the monster flees. Circe and Sprite are on the hunt for the beast. Circe's companion tries to jump as high as Circe. But he couldn't, so Circe sought to divert the creature's attention. The beast assaults Sprite without being distracted. Icarus appears and injures the beast. They notice that the creature can cure itself. Only Ayak, the Eternal's leader, possesses those abilities. Icarus attacks the thing once more, but it runs. Icarus married Circe 5,000 years ago, according to research. Then, 2,000 years ago, he left Circe. Circe tells her companion, I have to depart now because there are some people who need me. If you're a superhero, where were you when there were difficulties on Earth? Her pal asks. Circe claims that we were just sent to Earth to put an end to the animals. We were not permitted to engage in any other activities. Except for the fact that the population is growing and people are becoming more technologically advanced. They proceed to see Ayak in order to inform their boss that the beasts have returned. They are quite powerful this time. When they arrive at Ayak, they realize that he has died. This was the first time that an Eternal died on the planet. They realize Ayak is killed by the thing who assaulted them previously. The beast has snatched Ayak's abilities while also putting an end to her life. Ayak's neck sprouts a powerful stone. Circe's body is penetrated by the stone. Circe has been chosen by Ayak to command the Eternals once he dies. Circe can communicate with Arishem, and the two of them collect the Eternals. So they can put a stop to the beasts while reuniting and traveling to Kingo. Kingo is capable of removing little fire bullets from his fingers. Kingo has become a movie star and has been in a number of films. 
They ask Kingo to join them, but he refuses because he has a lot of work to do. I've signed a lot of movie contracts. When Kingo learns that their commander has died, he feels depressed. Then, as instructed by his management, he gets ready to go. They take Kingo's private plane to Australia. There are two more Eternals who live there with them. When they arrive, they discover that a massive creature has perished there. According to Kingo's manager, these creatures used to be very attractive. According to Kingo, are you insane? Which perspective makes this odor and disgusting critter seem appealing? Gilgamesh is another member they meet. He invites them to sample his dessert. He becomes depressed as they inform him about Ayak's death. His cake likewise slips from his grasp. They then move on to Thena, another member. While seated under a tree, she was drawing. Then Thea suffers a fit and attacks everybody who comes near her. Gilgamesh has been living with Thena for over 7,000 years. Thena is capable of attacking while drawing a strong weapon from her hands. Thena attacked them, and Sprite changed the mood in the room. She attempts to remind her who they are and what their goal is. Gilgamesh teaches Thena, and she returns to normalcy. They eat dinner later. Circe walks over to the spot where Thena was sketching. Her spirit approaches her leader after she sees her drawing and tries to contact her. She informs her commander that the monsters have returned to Earth. They've even taken Ayak's abilities while killing her. On Earth, strange things are happening. Their commander, Arishem, tells her that this is the sign of an emergence. Circe inquires, what is emergence? Now is the moment, he adds, to inform you about your true mission. In fact, you were sent to the planet to put an end to the animals. Many thousands of years ago, I sowed a seed on the planet. Millions of years of human energy are required for the seed to grow. However, I made a blunder when creating humans and animals. Those odd deviants were the result of a blunder on my part. They were reducing the population of people by devouring them. Then I created you, as well as other Eternals. So you'll be the one to put an end to those deviants creatures. Circe inquires if Ayak was aware of this. He claims that you and Ayak have assisted Celestials in becoming human. Why don't I recall all of this, Circe asks. He claims that I delete your memories on a regular basis, which is why you have no recollection of anything. It also discovers that Thena's dreams were indeed her childhood experiences. They weren't totally erased. Circe returns to her colleagues and informs them of the situation. They are taken aback when they hear this. Circe claims that we must save people and prevent this emergence. Otherwise, mankind will be extinct as a result of it. Icarus says we need to go out and find others, and then we'll figure out what we need to do once we're all together. They travel to the Amazon rainforests, where Druig resides. They tell Druig everything, but he refuses to accompany them. Many animals assault them, and Kingo uses his power to fire back. Sprite attempts to save Kingo's boss. Icarus is pitted against a beast in the area. Icarus is thrown to the ground, and the beast seeks to seize his powers, but Gilgamesh comes. He has a powerful punch and the ability to wield his hands as a hammer. Circe transforms a beast that tries to attack her into a tray. The beasts, on the other side, assault Thena, but Gilgamesh protects her. The creature's leader, on the other hand, transmits Gilgamesh's powers while killing him. It adopts the shape of a human body as it imparts Gilgamesh's powers. It is also aware of the emergence. Gilgamesh dies, but not before saying, remember me. Circe and Icarus switch to Fastos, a new member. Fastos claims he can't travel because he lives with his family. Then he agrees and prepares to accompany them. The Eternals relocate to Iraq, where their spaceship has been for the past 7,000 years. Macari was already aboard the spaceship when they moved inside. Macari was a member of the group who was unable to communicate but could run faster than electricity. Fastos develops a device that allows the Eternals to use their powers to stop the emergence. He claims that if the creatures can use our abilities, we can use our abilities together. Fastos was a well-informed engineer. He has contributed to the advancement of human technology. Circe's stone locket begins to light up. Circe notices that the emergence is approaching. Macari is dispatched by Fastos to find out where this emergence would take place. While wandering over the globe, Macari notices the emergence and wonders where it is. Icarus destroys Fastos' technology machine. Icarus is discovered to have terminated Ayak. Ayak also wants to put a stop to it. Humans are also a favorite of hers. That is why Icarus has decided to put a stop to Ayak. 
When Ayak told Icarus that the emergence was going to happen and that we needed to inform the Eternals, she was shocked. Icarus, on the other hand, has placed Ayak in front of those monsters. The creatures have snatched Ayak's abilities while also putting an end to her life. When Ayak died, Icarus sent her back to her home. When they question Icarus for a reason, he responds that Arishem has given him his life. If I have to, I'll put an end to you. Icarus exits after saying this, and Sprite joins him. We can't do anything without Icarus' support, Kingo stated as he was leaving. Kingo is likewise on his way out. The other Eternals' powers weren't enough to stop the emergence, so they left. Cersei, Fastos reports that your abilities allow you to join Arishem. He claims that as a result of it, we will be able to form a university band, and that the emergence will be halted. He forms a band with Cersei's stone and pilots their spaceship to the location where emergence would begin. Icarus and Sprite were witnessing emergence. Other Eternals arrived to put an end to the emergence. A massive celestial was ready to emerge from the emerging, posing a threat to the entire globe. They joined forces with their band to use their abilities to stop the emergence. Druig is thrown far by Icarus. When Makari sees this, she yells. She defeats Icarus, who hasn't been defeated in over 7,000 years. Cersei tells Fastos that he will try to stop the emergence on his own. Okay, you attempt to stop this, and we try to stop Icarus, says Fastos. Icarus is fought by the other Eternals. When the creature's leader arrives, Makari forms a massive circle around him. It kidnaps Makari and tries to take her powers, in the meantime, Fastos attacks the creature and throws Makari a long distance. It is located within a mountain cave. Icarus is bound by Fastos technology. Cersei attempts to stop the emergence, but Sprite stabs her in the back with a knife. She claims that she does not desire to save mankind. I've been on this planet for almost 7,000 years and I've never understood what love is. What is the definition of a family? Meanwhile, Druig appears and attacks the head of Sprite. Thena appears on the other side, and she is annoyed by the past. The deviant monster was attempting to gain Gilgamesh's powers. Thena awakens and uses her abilities to create a lethal weapon. She shatters the creature into fragments, the emergence begins, and the angelic hands gradually manifest. Cersei was using her abilities to attempt to stop the Celestial. Icarus has been released and is on his way to putting an end to Cersei. Then he recalls his encounters with Cersei. With them, Icarus also seeks to halt the emergence. The emergence of the heavenly comes to a halt, and the celestial dies before being born. Icarus last sees Cersei and then vanishes as he moves towards the sun. Macari, on the other hand, was overjoyed to see Druig and greeted him with a hug. Cersei tells Sprite that she still possesses celestial abilities. If you want, I can make you comfortable. Then you'll evolve into a person and die one day. Sprite answers yeah, I'm ready, and they head to Fasto's house for dinner. Sprite was accepted into the school. Cersei meets up with a buddy, who informs her that he is not